Today's topic is Neurological Examination. The neurological examination in children will depend on the child's age and willingness, but it can usually be carried out in the normal way in older children. The most common neurological examination may include mental status, motor function and balance, reflexes, sensory perception, eye. The eye should be checked and inspected for conjunctivitis, cataracts, or congenital defects. The pupil responses are checked. This is done by examining whether the eye's pupil opens and closes appropriately in the presence of light. Pupils are measured for size and symmetry in both light and darkness. Ocular fixation is evaluated. Here, the doctor will note if the child fixates on things such as light and follows as it moves. Ocular alignment should also be assessed to identify abnormal eye alignment, such as in the case of strabismus. It is essential to check for squint. The external portion of the eye, including eyelids, orbits, conjunctiva, sclera, cornea, and iris, should be examined. Using the light, the examiner should inspect for excessive tearing, watery discharge, and gross structural abnormalities. Red reflux examination is carried out. Red reflux should be equal in both eyes when viewed simultaneously. If it is absent, it could be indicative of corneal, lens, or vitreous opacity, such as retinoblastoma. When both visual acuity and ocular alignment are accessed, the doctor should note the possibility of lazy eyes, amblyopia. Abdomen. The examination should follow three essential components of observation, palpitation, feeling, and auscultation, listening. The doctor should start by observing the abdomen for signs of swelling and movement. The doctor should watch the child's face. He or she gently and lightly palpitates the stomach and ask if the tummy hurts anywhere. The four quadrants should be palpated to determine the position and size of the liver, spleen, kidneys, and bladder. The position, size, surface, and texture of any enlarged organ should be noted. The character of the edge, if there is one, and whether it is tender should also be noted. The nose, ears, mouth, and throat. The nose is examined superficially. The doctor looks at the nose from the front and side and note size and shape, obvious bend or deformity, swelling, scars or crease, inflammation, the position of the septum and the presence of polyps, redness, discharge, and any offensive smell. The examination of the ear includes an assessment of hearing as well as the appearance of the ear. The external ear should be checked for size and shape, signs of trauma to the pinna, skin condition of the pinna, and inflammation of the external ear canal with discharge. Note the condition of the ear canal skin, the presence of wax, foreign tissue, or discharge. A detailed hearing test is performed. To view the throat of a defiant child, a tongue depressor may be inserted into the gap between clamped teeth and cheek and the teeth. The mouth is examined and the condition of the tongue is noted. The back of the tongue may be pressed down with a tongue depressor. This is done to examine the back of the tongue and the tonsils. The uvula and soft palate should be inspected. Also, inspect the hard palate. Genitalia, groin, and anus. If it is necessary to examine the child, nappy or underpants can be removed. In small babies, the testes should be present in the scrotum. In girls, the vulva should be checked for redness, soreness, or discharge. Check the labia, separate normally. The anal orifice should be checked for fissures which are associated with constipation. Thank you for watching our video. Please do not forget to like and share the video. Also, please subscribe to the channel to stay updated on our latest videos.